uh, otherwise I have to try again. Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Um, so I tried somehow to get both. Um, the, uh, do you see the, only the slideshow or the... Uh, I just start, okay. Today's my anniversary. I started exactly 21 years ago on the 15th of October okay. at the office Hamburg. Um. So, um, free bees for freer beer for everyone. And um, as well, I'm um, the maintainer. Are you still working? Do you hear me? Hello, hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. All right, sorry. So sure. the maintainer of the audio toolkit I'm talking tomorrow. So there's no real uh, maintainer, but it's something from this sometime. And uh, recently, because I, I, I rejoined the ODFTC, I became the editor two months ago after spending six weeks to releasing, um, to fixing audio 103 and um, tooling on this and starting this GitHub. And um, I did this with uh, Michael Stahl, who is also co-editor. And even more recently, I became a co-chair of um, the TC chair. So um, it's time to celebrate. And let's talk about um, the reason of the ODFTC. The TC is a um, technical committee, and it's maintaining the specification, which is the blueprint for ODF applications. So it was invented that um, there is an interoperability between ODF application. Like if you have a certain size of paper in your printer, you can buy, buy it from every vendor, and it fits in all, um, in all um, printers, like DNA4 paper. It's quite similar. That's the whole reason of a standard of an ecosystem and independence and um, um, like a Lego blocks, right? They're compatible. And um, to talk about why we need Git, and uh, when I say GitHub, it uh, can be GitLab as well, but GitHub is just for, for the ODFTC. The usual thing, the usual process from this uh, committee is that we meet every week and we discuss JIRA issues. Uh, that's also the tool of choice. And um, when there's a solution, we paste it in, and in the end, the editor takes the GR solution, put it into the specification document. And um, just that's a simple way, pro simplified uh, work process now. And um, so what about GitHub issues? Well, they came later. And um, my, my choices or my, my idea is that we put the, the talk about ODF, the features, semantics, people are interested in, in enhancing ODF. They are still based on JIRA. And when it's coming up, uh, editorial changes, how we make this differentiate this spec, how we can make something better, it's um, it's on GitHub. So we have a like, separation of concerns here. So why version control? Um, so I thought always thought it's a good idea to, if we have a blueprint of software, um, it's the same reason when we work on software, like you want to have all your deliverables on the, on the, on the on a single plate, like uh, the source code, yes. And basically there's ODT, which is also transformed to PDF and HTML, and the grammar, the relax and G grammar. And you see this bold relax and G HTML, this is something new. Um, you know, um, you, maybe you know the request for changes, uh, and they're also in HTML. And similar, I created some, I can't see now if you can see it, and I, I don't paste it now, but um, it's just an HTML page, or the RNG in HTML, and now they are linked together. So, so when you search something, um, then you can jump through the document. And also, they, I used some fragment identifier here to, to have some line highlighting and some, yeah. So if anybody's invited to enhance this tooling, so I would love that you click on the line and then jump to that line, you change the fragment identifier. Yeah, learning just JavaScript. So. so, and back to it, aside of that, we need, of course, the tooling. And after years, so nine years ago, uh, ODF 102 released, and where all this transformation, the Excel transformation of to ODT to HTML, that was, yeah, it was not broken, but it was not adapted. Uh, it was once my task uh, at the web office. I started at um, some microsystems, and um, the same Excel transformation. My staff was so kind to to, um, to to update in the in LibreOffice. It's the export filter uh, to XHTML, which should be changed to HTML because nobody's using XHTML. So, and the other thing is about extra default values. It's um, because uh, once there were default values in the in the grammar. And they were removed because silly parsers just inserted them in every XML and blow up the XML. So, so instead they were taken out of the schema and into the specification. And there they were highlighted with styles and could be extracted. And Quincy the OD toolkit used these default values to 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 um, generate source code. From, okay. And I realized um, when I rejoined that this was totally completely forgotten and broken and, and updated it is and um, it's not made into the 
um, into the deliverables because they are conditional default values, and so it's not ready, and um, uh, it was never. So, but it's it's going to be. Um, uh, we work. So, and last but not least, we of course we need to enable reviews. Like, why principle is the text in the Jira you really the same way overtaken the ODT, and was the fix in the in the ODT di um, correct? And because these are binaries. Uh, Michael and I came up with the idea that um, we used um, in LibreOffice the, 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 um, the configuration to um, pretty print the XML, and we also unzip it there. And um, and we might in the future uh, do some uh, automatic tests, like before you change something, we do a pre-commit hook, meaning an automatic test um, that, for instance, the the extracted def default values are still the same and not um, not any any regression. So, and last but not least, the automated Oasis release process. So what is this? I, I come to the next slide for this. Oh, first of all, sorry. Um, this is the structure. When you go for it, um, we use the simple Maven standard directory uh, layout, meaning uh, there's a source with main and test. The main contains all the deliverables, and the test is all which is not even delivered, like the tools and tests. And, and the docs, this is a GitHub feature. Um, it's been directly mapped to, to a page, a GitHub page, where, for instance, uh, people can um, can check the HTML HTML output before it's being integrated, which is pretty pretty cool and pretty um, yeah useful. So what's the what's the uh, automatic process? So from a high level, there's a system called Oasis or the TC receives from Oasis from time to time new ODD templates about look and feel, and sometimes they need to re uh, deliver a zip bundle of the release. Yes, and the problem is um, I <laughs> faced it many times and um, spent really days on this just to change dates within and uh, the always release IDs and URLs and some names and this is very very cumbersome yes and um, many other things as well and usually all software developer would put a variable in this and will exchange the variable during um, the continuous integration of the automatic release okay and that's exactly what we should do here as well and we haven't done yet and that's the solution to put some some um, placeholders in and, and and every time constantly Bundle a zip when, with every change that can could be delivered to to Oasis. Yes, so currently it's pretty time consuming. So um, what is in the long term goal? I, I, there's some I coined it. Uh, it's called edge specification. So November. So it's like a vision like the the, the mountain in the end um, and the horizon. It's um, when the specification the blueprint, right? Then it makes sense that the blueprint software um, harmonize. Like um, if the software uh, but currently, software has been updated uh, usually um, not weekly. Maybe LibreOffice. I'm not sure. Is it now a quarter or uh, uh, half half a year? But it's 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 much faster than the nine years of the last ODF on the two speed application. And they they need to be in harmonized. Like usually, you should first um, implement the uh, update the blueprint and then generate uh, parts of it. Yeah, it's from this application. And so this is. This is a time gap, it's a common problem. And I state the solution, it's we need to have more automation, more generation, like uh, when there's like default rate, they have to be extracted. And also these uh, human readable specification needs to be generated from from some basic data, yes. And also test document, maybe piece of test, should be at spec level. And Regina started with um, test documents because Microsoft asked for it um, to have ODT test documents and uh, or ODF documents 1 or 3 and it makes sense to collect them at one place so now every application has to re-implement them and re as well. And to give an example, take a look at these. This is a common old 1 or 2 table table. Um, you see there are three chapters like um, paragraphs. There's first all the parents of this table and then the next is the attribution, last the children. This is a very easy way of, of generating things. And it's been generated and should be generated because if the, the uh, you don't want to um, maintain this manually. So it's a night. Yes. So um, another thing is about ODF adoption, right? Um, um, I know how to put it here, but with every every ODF release, ODF applications have to be updated. And well, honestly, an, an a spec an application can be, um, and that's not happening at the moment. Can be um, can be split into features. Currently, these features are these changes are bundled by Jira issues at the end of each spec. When you when you look at one or three at the agenda appendix, there is um, there are some Jira issues. But that's not the optimal way. You have to look at the Jira issues. Have to read them. That's not the automation. So what can we do better? Of course, we can. So imagine there's a new feature like oh we have a page orientation 
um, which is seems to be very simple. Um, you know, in every table and paragraph, it's an existing feature. You can change the landscape, the orientation. So you can use landscape or portrait of the page, meaning it's horizontal, vertical. So in from a from a software developer's um, view, you say, oh, that's simple. We have this paragraph or table object, and we have a Boolean uh, attribute that's um, either um, landscape or portrait. That's easy fix, yes. But how does it how does it look in the XML? So we have the user feature, the semantic definition of a peg, um, of, of an orientation that can be changed on a paragraph, and we have this XML syntax. And okay, this is one of the I show you now. Um, this is one of the most complex things. It's hard to see here, but um, at the bottom there's a table. Sorry, there's a paragraph here, and it's referencing up in yellow to the paragraph style, which is the page style in orange, and that's a content XML moving to a different XML. And then going to the the red, the, the page layout, which is, well, it's a little bit difficult. And especially if you want to have like, oh, automatic generate this feature. Like what happens if in the runtime model, I uh, change the layout in the, of the paragraph, then this XML have to be automated altered, okay? Depending on true or false, yes, in all cases. And that is what I'm going to work in the next year in the order of two kids. So this is going to be for tomorrow and just, it's written here the paragraph to the styles, the style to master page, and so on. Okay, so it's it's a little cumbersome, and so there's a certain gap. And to to have it in a specification is like um, to, to to define this. And the source code is simply, and I did myself and I took it once. You have to manually write it down. You have to glue it together, and it's it's you have to. I've written it now for Java, and when somebody comes in, oh, I want to have a C sharp on C I have to write it again, and that's stupid. I I think you have to do it in a declarative way and generate source code from it, and I, I, I'm going to try this. So, so my personal wish list is here. Um, I want to have enhancement of the ODF um, spec review and generation to toss and talk about it so it's continuous integration, continuous, continuous deployment. We, we want to have a machine-readable ODF info set, and first of all, we, we are missing semantics. So I joined um, the, the ODFTC in summer, when, rejoined when, when the question came up, what does it mean when the when the cell a table cell is empty from a what does it mean for the xml okay so i was yeah it sounds boring but to me it was very interesting because um that's exactly what i need i need a semantic view that every user can understand or um odf user and then i have to from and i need for this some semantic dictionary maybe um regina started with it already and like we all know a paragraph of these things and from this, we can we can talk on to the ODF semantic changes because it's funny because for test API because because funny because in all rich text editors ODF application you can insert a table insert a row insert a column but it's not defined that you can do this you expect it as a user but it, in my point of view it's underspecified that we specificate underspecified no whatever it's underspecified <laughs> that um, that's not been there so if we have to do this we could have a performance test so we can compare things like post this map have things like uh, HTML does, as it. Okay, and that's the last slide. It's it's just um, if you didn't understand that um, um, I did at the beginning of the year. T T talks about my twenty years, um, the past and the future, uh, and you see the next million document format should embrace all this and more. Um, but it would spark this. That's all. Um, are there any questions? Oh, but I think I'm running out of time anyway. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, though. <laughs> um, um, maybe. Maybe if you do have questions, um, you can uh, write something on Telegram and uh, people yeah. can ask you those on the side. Or just call me, ping me, yeah, directly. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, again, as I mentioned, uh, Sarah's talk will.